that the Israeli-Arab conflict can be traced all the way back to the beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis. There was a man named Abraham, and in Genesis 16, it tells of a story of how Abraham and his concubine Hagar had a son, and that son was named Ishmael. Hagar was Sarah, his wife's Egyptian slave, and Sarah gave Abraham to his concubine to have a child because she was unable to bear at that point in her life. But God promised Abraham a promised child. He promised Abraham that he would have a child, that he would be able to bestow his blessing, and then that child would go ahead and fulfill his true calling and destiny of multiplying the earth. Therefore, Abraham is always called the father of many nations. It goes on to talk in Genesis 21 how Abraham and Sarah ended up eventually being able to bear a child. That child was Isaac. Isaac was born to Abraham when he was a hundred years old. Now, We're thinking in modern terms, 100 years old, you're probably thinking, no way can a person have a child at 100 years old. We don't know what it was like back then when Abraham and Sarah were around. People were living until they were two, 300 years old. So Abraham had a child at 100 years old. Sarah was 90. The birth of Isaac was a miracle at that time. But God promised Abraham and Sarah that they would have a promised child. The Arab people are supposedly the descendants of Ishmael, and the Israelis are supposedly the descendants of Isaac. Now in Genesis, the Bible tells the story of how the Jewish people had a close relationship with God. Later on in Joshua 1, it says the Israelis later conquered Canaan and they established their kingdom there. Now, if we fast forward a little bit, the Israelis were eventually exiled, but then a prophet told them that they would retake the land of Canaan and they would one day return to establish their kingdom. The Bible says that one day God would restore the Israelites to their promised land and that they would rebuild their temple. And in Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah also predicts that the Israelites would one day return to their homeland. Now, there's even some significance in the New Testament when Jesus came on the scene. You see, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He lived and was raised in Israel, and he died in Israel. And the New Testament promises that Jesus would soon return back to Israel to establish his kingdom on this earth. Now, nobody likes war, and both sides need to be prayed for. But the Bible also says we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Now, if we go back to the book of Genesis, we know that God blessed Isaac, but it also says that he blessed Ishmael, and that their descendants would continue to be great. Now, in a more practical sense, the Palestinians believe that the Jews took their land, but yet the Jews believe that that land is their promised inheritance. After World War II, the United Nations voted to partition the land into two separate states. One state would be for the Jews, the second state would be for the Arabs. The Arabs rejected this partition plan and they invaded Israel around 1948. This led to the first Arab-Israeli war. But this is not new. Even though people are seeing this for the first time, a younger generation doesn't know the significance or the historical significance of this being rooted in the Bible. The conflict between the Israelites and the Palestinians began thousands of years ago. Now, there are over 2,500 prophecies in the Bible. 2,000 of them have already come to pass. In Isaiah, the Bible promises that the Messiah will return to Israel and establish his kingdom on this earth. In the book of Acts, the Bible promises that God will restore all things in Israel, including its land, its people, and the temple. In Isaiah and Jeremiah, the Bible also promises that God will gather the exiled Israelites and bring them back to their homeland. And in Isaiah and Zechariah, the Bible promises that Jerusalem will eventually be a place of peace and prosperity. Now, here's one thing we truly need to understand for both sides. Not all Palestinians are bad, and not all Israelis are bad. Yes, there are extremists on both sides, but we need to know that it's better to come together and to find peace and unity than it is to be in disagreement and disunity. Here in America, we're seeing everything from the outside and it's so easy to cast the stones and it's so easy to judge one side or the other. And then when you take politicians and you bring them into the mix, this becomes a political war and it just causes more chaos. One thing we all need to do is pray for peace. We need to pray for the families that are being disrupted by this violence. 
We need to pray for the women and the children that are being displaced. Now, I don't know how long this is gonna last. I don't know if it'll ever be over in our lifetime. But what I do know is there's a few lessons that can be learned here. Number one lesson is have compassion for others. Even though some people are not the same as you, they don't speak the same language, they don't look like you, they don't think like you, they don't act like you, it's not for us to judge them. We need to have compassion for all people. You see, Isaac was God's child, but so was Ishmael. Ishmael and Isaac are both God's children, and God loves both sides. And maybe you're watching this from other parts of the world. We believe that what we're seeing right now will eventually lead to every single prophecy that was ever prophesied in the great book coming to pass. So my friends, it's important to be vigilant. It's important to keep your head on a swivel. It's important to keep watch and make sure that your families are protected. It's important even here in America to make sure that you are considerate of others, you are empathetic of others, you are compassionate of others, you are praying for others, and you're not causing disunity but you're going out there and you're promoting peace. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us for this video. I know it was a little different than normal stuff that I put out on this channel, but I feel like there's a reason that I needed to post it. Make sure you do all the YouTube things. Click the thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment. Whether you agree or disagree, leave a comment. Let's get a dialogue going. And until the next video, make sure you live well, laugh loud, and learn to be a better you.